Gospel Family Church, we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. Anyone who would like to come and join us on our missions, you are invited. Anyone who would like to give financially, you can use the information you see below. Also, I just want to say thank you for your support in advance. God bless. for this blessed opportunity to be entrusted with your word and to preach and teach your word to your people. And I thank you, Lord God, for strengthening me, for helping me, for downloading in me, for removing anything that Major wants to say, and making sure that it's your word that goes forth so that lives can be transformed and changed for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I wanted to encourage you today and tell you, share up. Right. Cheer up. There's a lot of unfortunate circumstances taking place in the world today and probably in your own personal life. Mm. And guess what? There will always be challenging situations because the word of God said so. That's right. And as we go through these challenges, it strengthens us and helps us to overcome. And these challenges increases our confidence. And it's the confidence that allows us to cheer up and then become a cheerleader for somebody else. Amen. Because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yeah. But you can't somebody you can't tell somebody what to do if you didn't go through. Well right. so at some point we have to not prepare for the unfortunate circumstances, but be ready to change our perspective so we can walk through them cheerfully, on, even man. though they aren't favorable. Yes. So I started by talking about when I first got saved, you know, when you first get saved, you're enthusiastic, you're on fire, you heard all the miracles, you heard all the testimonies, so you think all this is about to happen to you right now. Mm -hmm. Nothing, everything, every bill going to get paid, refrigerator going to be full, car <laughs> going to work, everything is going to be fine, and then you find out. <laughs> and then you also think, because you're enthusiastic about Christ, when you share it with others, you think they're going to be like, oh, what I got you to be saved? And they're like, if she don't get away with it. Tell the truth. But that was hard for me. Number one, I'm emotional. And number two, I'm analytical. So now I have to deal with the rejection of my so-called friends, my still friends. Rejection of them, rejecting Christ, rejecting me. I have to deal with all these unfortunate circumstances that I didn't think would happen to me because I'm saved. But then I realized now in my 20th year of being saved Come on, that my friends aren't rejecting me. They just respected my anointing more than I did. Because right. uh -huh. when I showed up, they knew who was showing up. They yes. knew who was in me. Yes. And I'm still thinking I'm fake money from <laughs> West Oak Lane or Westchester. Yeah. China down up to two. <laughs> <laughs> and they looking at Dr. Elder Phaedra Brown before I was even that, because they saw people see God in us. Yeah. yeah. Once we accept him as Lord, Savior, yeah. and God. Hallelujah. So we're going to go to the word today. My foundation chapter is John 16. We're going to focus on the last one. But we're going to work through this word today. And then I just have a couple of pointers, and then we're going to go. Amen? Amen. John 16. John 16. Everybody ready? Amen. The things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. That you should put out of the sin you they, they shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you would think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and the righteousness and of judgment of sin. Because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but ye cannot bear them down. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatever shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come, and shall glorify me, and for, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some said of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and shall be sorrowful, but because your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she in travail an hour, sorrow, because her hour is come, but as soon as she delivereth of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Very, very, I say unto you, whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive, and your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall speak no more unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you painting of the Father. And that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. And his disciples said unto him, Look, Jesus, you got to speak plainly. I need to Like, what are you talking about? Now be sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not any man should ask thee. But this is, but this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered him, Do you believe now? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, and in me ye might have peace. That in me ye might have peace. In the world ye <coughs> shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Amen. So Jesus laid some heavy stuff on the disciples that day. He talked about his death, he talked about his departure, and then he talked about their desertion after he left. So that's like Bishop coming in here saying, in three days I'm going to die, and then I'm going to go away, and y'all not going to have me no more. We, our initial response would be like, what is he talking about? Why is he talking about he's leaving us? Who, like, who was going to kill Bishop? Now on today, like, we'll be ready, just like the disciples was, to protect Jesus. And they were heavy, they were upset, they were sad, they were perplexed. Like, what are you talking about? Don't say another parable. We need clarity. What do you mean? And he was saying, I'm going to go, and I'm not going to be with you, but I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to be with you. Yeah. But they just couldn't understand it right then and there. They were too upset. So then, after he told them that, he said, but be of good cheer. I told you all of this stuff, so you should have peace. But now I need you to be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And that scripture, that one line helps me a lot because it lets me know that no matter what we go through, how hard or trying it is, God is never surprised. Yeah. Yeah. That gave me peace. Yeah. 20 years ago when things went, what happened, I would get out of, been out of 
to shake, I would get upset, I would get an attitude, I want to argue about things, when people don't do what you want them to do, people don't do what you think they should do, when you know it's best for them, you get upset. Now, I don't. It took 20 years to get here. But I know how to be cheerful when I get news that's not favorable. And that's a process, even in Christ. Because at first, like I told you in Christ, you don't even think you're going to go through anything. Walk on water, you're gonna find money in the fish mouth, people are gonna lay hands on you, you're gonna be healed. And then after a while, you realize that this thing is a process, and things that go through a process are better at the end. Yeah. Some of us don't have a lot of time to eat, so we'll drive through and get something quick. But if we have a boyfriend like mine, he'll take six hours to make pasta. All right. And I don't care what nobody say. Six hour oxtail is better than the number one. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, God puts us through the process because he's making us. Yes. And that's when diamonds are made, under pressure. Under pressure. Yes. And we have to go through, and even with our children, my children, as much as I love them and want to protect them and keep them from everything I can, because it's the unfavorable things that's going to make them. So all I can do is stand back and pray for them, give them the word, raise them up the way they're supposed to be raised. But I can't keep them from conforming to Christ for themselves. Amen. It's a process. Yeah. So, almost done. I am going to tell you my recipe for how I become cheerful in the crisis. It's the only thing I can do is share with you what I do. The first thing I do when something happens, say you hear some bad news or you see something. Even though we're in Christ, we're in this world. Yeah. So everybody isn't going to automatically say, if you hear some horrible news, you're not going to say, praise God, bless That's God. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not realistic for right. everyone. Some people right. are there. That's right. Some of us have to sit and process Mom. what just happened That's right. and what we just heard. For example, my little cousin, two years ago, was in a car after graduation. I don't know what happened. He ended up getting shot in the head. We're at Temple. I could barely even get out of my house. I, could, I was crawling. I couldn't stand up. Because what I heard affected every part of me, spiritually, physically, and it made me both drop down. I'm crying. He passes. That has to be processed. Yes. Just because I'm sad doesn't mean I'm going to get up, clap, and everything is going to be all right. That was two years ago, and I'm still affected. Yeah. I'm still mad. I'm still sad. I miss him. My kids miss him. And part of processing bad news like that is I journal. I dump all my thoughts out. And some people might not journal, but they might go to therapy, or they might have a friend. Because sometimes you have to get things out, go back and read it, and then talk to yourself. Or sometimes you have to talk to somebody for them yeah. to hear what you say, yeah. give you back what you said, yeah. and see if it makes sense. A lot of times it doesn't. Because like I said, I'm emotional. I'm either ready to cry or put somebody in the face. There's really no in between. And I have to sit and call first lady all the time. Hey, what you doing? Can I bet? So she said, and then I was like, what? No, you didn't. And then, yeah, and then she'd be like, baby. <laughs> no. And then after a while, I'm like, you're right. But that's how I process it. And in addition to journaling and reaching out to people about things I've gone, I'm going through or things I've heard, I've seen, the other thing I like to do, in addition to journaling and talking, is research. I have to research everything. I need to know why, I need to know the root, I need to know what's happening, I need to know what God said. So I'm on Google, I'm in the book, I'm trying to figure out who else went through this to help me get through it. My little cousin isn't the first one to get killed. And unfortunately, he won't be the last. So it's an entity out there that's been maneuvering and going through this to help me not go crazy. Or to help me not try to retaliate. I wouldn't, but some people do. The pain is so bad, they just want to get the person back. Mm -hmm. So, what did I say? What did I say? Research. 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 Yeah. So I research a lot. 
all day, all night, I'm on my phone thinking about things so that I can come from point A to point B. You have to reach out to people. We have to stop going through hard things alone. Amen. Yeah. 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 Come on. And yeah. there's no need. You're going to stay there longer. Yes, sir. So you might as well, now I'm going, man, you can't call everybody and tell everybody everything, That's but right. you know who you can call. That's right. And you need to go ahead and call them. You know who you can call and fall out on the floor with and tell them everything and cry and sigh yeah. and yeah. what he did and what she did. And I can't believe God allowed, I've been there. Why would God allow my cousin? I prayed, I fasted, I laid hands on him back in the ER, the trauma center. He didn't get up. He still died. I can't be the first Christian that prayed and fasted for somebody to live and they didn't. So I have to get another perspective or I could be stuck there. I could be mad at God and say his word isn't true and that would be it. But of course, I'm too far along to know that. I know he's sovereign. And I know he doesn't make any mistakes. That's and right. I know that every man born to a woman must die. That's right. And we're not in control of how that process takes place. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean we're not still upset. But it is what it is. And I have to figure out how to be cheerful in this crisis. Mm -hmm. So with journaling and reaching out and talking to people. And I like to start things. So I'm trying to figure out how to start a basketball giveaway for him every year. Or maybe school supplies. I'm just not going to let him die in this game. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out how to let him live. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the things I do too. And then after that, the recipe is simple. First thing, every because once you hear something, go through something, research it, talk to people about it, you still have to get up and go on your way. Mm -hmm. America is horrible with warning. Mm -hmm. We'll have a funeral on Saturday and be at work on Monday. Yeah. That's, That's too right. much. That's too mm -hmm. much. You have to figure out how to process things and deal with them. Even with all your information, you still have to go through your day. So as you go through your day, you're still reading your word. You're still fasting. You're still confessing what you want according to the word. And you're still waiting. Sometimes God busts a move, and you'll get used to that. And then sometimes he won't move for seasons. Oh, yeah. And it's in those seasons that we're, we become stronger because we've been praying more. We've been fasting more. So because we've been fasting, we hear him clearly. We act on what he said. We're still tithing. We're still giving an offering. Even though my heart is still open and free, <coughs> I still have to do what I have to do. And then I can be a witness to the next mother cousin whose child is brutally murdered in the streets of Philadelphia. And I have three examples I want to talk about. Money or finances, love or relationships, and then health. The two I found the answers. The last one I'm still battling with, so I'm actually sharing how I'm still trying to be cheerful in a crisis. So the first one is money. About six years ago, I was so broke. I was broke, broke. Like I worked, but it all went out. You know what I mean? And it's things you want to do, the kids asking for stuff, you want to move. Like you're not asking for Maserati, you're not asking for Paris. If that's what you want, fine. But sometimes we just try to get basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And now I understand why Jesus met a lot of the needs for people, and then they were receptive and heard of. Yeah. And then he was able to move. Because I don't know how effective you're going to be talking to somebody hungry unless you give them something to eat first. Right. 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 <laughs> so it was heavy on me. Like, I know I'm not dumb. I know I'm really smart. I know I can do things and make moves. But it was a process. <coughs> And then being broke, I just came to church. I tithed when I could. I kept reading the word. I kept praying. I kept taking care of my kids. I kept respecting my mom. I kept doing everything I was supposed to do. Then, um, even with my house now, I, I don't think I had a job. Did I have a job when I looked at this? I didn't have a job. And I saw, because I study houses religiously, because I'm trying to move again. So at the time, I knew I wanted to move. I was in an apartment. I knew it was just transition, and I wanted this house that I've been studying for three years, and in one day, 
It said open house. I was like, kids at the church, we going to the house. I had no money. Count probably was negative, actually. <laughs> I went. I looked at the house, the model home. We talked. She asked me, um, did I need to, was I ready to buy? I was like, what does ready to buy look like? <laughs> Like, what does that mean today if I'm ready to buy? She was like, well, you can start the paperwork. You can start picking things out. I was like, do I need any money today? She was like, no, we're just going to start the paperwork. We're not going to get to the banking part until later. I said, okay, well, then I'm with you then. Like, <laughs> so I went on a whole process. The house, the house wasn't even, it was just brand. Then they said they would call me for the um, hard hat walkthrough. And I said, so when I come from the hard hat, for the hard hat work. Do I need to have any money? They was like, no, we're not at that part yet. Okay. So I came, it was just a wood frame, and they asked me what I wanted here, what I wanted there, what type of carpet, what type of knobs. Me and my mom drove somewhere, picked out the carpet knob, knobs on the uh, appliances. They asked me if I wanted a washer and dryer. I said, if I don't need any money today, yes. I, I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Um, they said the light brown parker was one price, but the darker was more expensive. Well, I need the darker because I have four kids. It says I don't need money today. Go on and throw that in. <laughs> no, that's and right. she said, do you want a tray seal? And I said, oh, yeah, I saw them in a magazine before. Throw a tray seal in up there to recess lights. My own bathroom. Really it was so much fun. Do you see I how know. cheerful I was when I broke prices? Because <laughs> <laughs> I had faith. Yeah. And then when it was time for the money, I didn't know, but my dad passed away New Year's Day. I started this protest in October, and my dad passed away New Year's Day, and he ended up leaving me money. And when it was time to go to the table with the money, me and my mom had the money. Hallelujah. Present moment. It's a terrible 
<laughs> but I got a daughter. <laughs> 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 she said, let me go to the car and get my phone and show you my daughter. Shows him, tells him where I work. Where oh, the school is, he could be Freddy Krueger and Jason <laughs> But I 
I'm in the process and I'm just staying still until God moves. I don't know what this is about. I can say I don't like it, but I can say I've learned and I've become more patient through all this pain that I go through. Right. Yeah. It's not all the time. You almost wish it's all the time because you don't get used to the pause. <laughs> But once it stops hurting and you feel a little better and you go on about your day for two, three days to a week and you feel like you're normal, then boom, it comes again. And then you're back in the bed, back on the beds, and you're back doing things. But I believe in God for my healing. Yeah. I wrote, I've written it down. Yeah. I'm going to confess the word over it. Um, I also confess that I weigh 150 pounds. Amen. 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 And they all gonna see it. I'm gonna Amen. be cheerful through this crisis. Amen. And it's going to happen. Amen. And that's what God says. Be of good cheer because he overcame the world. It's nothing that we're going through that he hasn't settled already. We just have to rest in it. Realize where we are. Analyze it. Some of us have more discernment and can figure things out quicker than others. Yeah. You know, once you've been saved for a while, you be like, oh, I know this demon, or I know this, or this. Some of the stuff is new for some of us. Yeah. So until God totally heals my body or until the manifestation occurs, I'm just gonna go on and be happy. I don't know what else to do. I love God too much, I know him too much to sit and be miserable. Yeah. Even though I'm in pain, I just get in the bed, crawl up, put my scarf on, take a couple of pills, and sit there. What else can I do? And just wait for them and believe them. I sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to myself and encourage myself in trying times. But it's hard to be a person who's used to getting up early, doing a lot of things, handling a lot of things, helping people, running around with little kids to being in a ball in the bed. It's a big difference. And it can mess with you mentally, too. So you have to have people that you can talk to to say what you're going through, bounce ideas off you. You know, people tell you, my one of my stories said, you need to go to another doctor. Get a different opinion. Amen. Get somebody else's perspective of what you're going through. Some doctors are just regular doctors, and some doctors specialize in some things. You have to figure out what you need. So I thank God for telling me that, because I did switch and did find some relief for a little while with another doctor who gave me another medication. I'm like, well, why the first doctor ain't say that? But anyway. <laughs> So then I came off those meds or whatever. I'm just over it. I healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm going to walk out this gospel. I'm going to continue to have faith. I'm still going to talk to people about Christ, whether they want to hear it or not. Most of the time they don't, but that's okay too. They just don't like now. One man plants another waters, but God gives the end. Amen.